Okay, so this is my weekly update for June, uh, week ending June 10th and looking forward to uh, June 13th, the week of June 13th. And uh, in the first section, I'm going to give you my sentiment about the market uh, and the, where I think things are going. Um, so I haven't really changed from last week. So I, my current sentiment, even despite the explosion we had today in the market, which is was pretty incredible, um, I am still of the mindset that uh, I'm 65% uh, bullish 35% bearish on the market as it stands today. Um, and that's in the short term. I'm going to say, you know, up to three months from now, uh, mid midterm, kind of still in that camp. Um, so up to 11 months, I'm 65% bullish. I, I'm still not neutral on anything. <laughs> All of my plays recently have been uh, back spreads and straddles and, um, with things moving very violently as they did today. Um, so uh, that's my sentiment at this point. And then uh, long term, I am 100% bearish. I, I really believe that we're going to be headed towards a depression. I just think that we're, we're still going to have some uh, uh, melt up or maybe it's a bear market gone crazy. Um, a, a bear rally gone crazy, um, but that's that's my uh, sentiment at the moment. Now, in the second part here, uh, the economic measures and indicators is actually going to be my kind of my perspectives um, all rolled into one at least this week. And uh, some of the economic measures that I'm uh, that obviously I'm looking at, and the one that came out today that really got the market going. Uh, sideways was CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index. Now, uh, there was some anticipation that the Consumer Price Index would start to see a little bit of relief in the CPI, um, but that didn't happen. And uh, so we got a CPI of 8.6%, which just sent the markets going crazy. So it is um, just one of those things where um, it the expectation, at least from my standpoint, was hoping that to see the CPI uh, go down a little bit, uh, get a little bit of relief because the economy is so weak, um, but it hasn't transferred yet. There's still a lot of money flowing through the markets, and so the con consumer price index, the inflation, the problems with spending by our government, the problems with supply chain, the, the uh, problems with oil all contribute to the consumer price index, although, oddly enough, and food, uh, CPI does not include food or energy. Um, so the CPI misrepresents how bad it really is. Add on to that, that the measure uh, for CPI has not uh, does not have the same definitions that it had, let's say, in 1980. And actually, if you look at um, a website that I've uh, talked about quite a bit for those who know me, uh, is uh, John Williams Shadow Government Statistics. And uh, I want to give him full credit for the things that he does here. It's actually a very excellent site. But as you can see on here, um, where we're at 8.6%. This was in, or, or excuse me, this was probably around 7% in May. Um, he, he was showing close to 16 or 17% uh, around that time period. And we've gone up since then. So we're, we're probably pretty close to, in 1980 terms to 20% uh, consumer price index rate. So that's... That's kind of the, <laughs> the situation that we're in now uh, and why the market is uh, reacting so violently to the things that are, that are happening. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that pushes things down. But that's one of the reasons why getting into options, uh, we go to things like uh, back spreads and, and uh, 
uh, straddles, but I'll talk about that at the end here. So let's look at some other measures and things that are going on that, that at least I pay attention to. And this is the CNN Business Fear and Greed Index. And uh, it's still uh, at in the fear mode of 28. Um, most things are in fear. The stock price strength is still greedy. Um, neutral and market volatility, although I, I know it was up today. I think it's running around 27 or 28 uh, in, in the VIX. And uh, those all kind of play into the score that they give. But I, I, I don't pay a ton of attention to it, but I, I do uh, pay attention to the fact that people are so fearful and that that's a good time uh, to be greedy in my contrarian type of investment style. So if we look at other investments here, um, look at, uh, or excuse me, some other sentiment reports. Uh, this is another one I pay attention to. Uh, I think I, sh I showed this last week, but it's the AAII sentiment report. And uh, it's at 21%. Now that was as of Wednesday this week uh, on, on Jan or excuse me, June 8th uh, this week. And uh, it is one of those things that uh, I, I'm sure, based off of the last couple of days, that that uh, bullish 21% for this for through Wednesday of, of this past week, um, that it's down into the teens somewhere. But we'll wait till Wednesday and things could ch turn around again before Wednesday. But I'm sure if they took it at this moment in time, that it would be somewhere in the teens. And that's very... Uh, and the bearish sentiment would be probably 50 or more, uh, 50 percent or more. And uh, so it's, again, one of those things that I pay attention to from a, uh, being a contrarian investor. Uh, the other one that, that we look that came out today was the University of Michigan uh, consumer sentiment. Now, this is a graph that is for the last 50 years and what consumer sentiment and what each of these gray spots or, or lines here uh, represent uh, our recessions that we had. And uh, so, so we had these, these lines. Now look where we are now. We're technically not in a recession, but by all um, indicators, from my standpoint, we're in a recession. Uh, the only thing that hasn't been confirmed is th this next quarter of negative GDP. We've got one quarter in. The first quarter was negative. Um, I suspect that the second quarter will wind up being uh, negative also, but I may be wrong. Um, but almost all of the indicators, it's amazing to me that uh, the, the rolling over of a lot of the, the weakness that we're seeing, we're not seeing uh, the Fed quite act the way that we would expect them to act. So um, those are, are some of the sentiment indicators. The other things that I'm watching right now is the U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury. And uh, you can see just in the, <laughs> this is a six-month chart. Uh, it was down at 1.43%. And now we, it's more than doubled. And matter of fact, it's gone up higher than I thought it would. And, and it's sitting at 3.156%. Um, and now we're starting to get into where I, it starts to affect what my sentiment is about things. If it starts to get between three point, I'm going to say three and a quarter percent and three and a half percent, um, then that's when I'll say, uh, you know, yellow flashing lights type of thing. My, uh, sentiment will go from 65% bullish, 35% uh, bearish to more 50-50 in that range. And then once uh, uh, it hits over 3.5%, then uh, all the red lights will be, going off, uh, uh, will be going off in my head and uh, I'll be uh, bearish also. Um, but we'll see if that happens. I, I think this is doing some of the tightening as long as some of the we see some of the things that we're seeing in sentiment, some of the things we're doing, seeing in uh, the consumer sentiment, the investor sentiment, uh, some of the things that are ha happening with the CPI um, are all uh, playing a role, but they're probably going to have the Fed continue to uh, raise rates 
um, as they planned, and some people are expecting now that we'll get a three-quarter hit uh, in June. Uh, you know, when they meet this month, uh, I don't know whether they will or won't. They've got to be seeing some of the other weaknesses that that I'm seeing here, uh, other than the ten-year treasury, which to me is a very broad indicator on uh, treasuries. Because uh, it affects things like what I'm looking at here is our mortgage. The mortgage rate now has gone back up to 5.23 percent. What does that affect? Well, it's going to affect um, everything from uh, uh, you know for buying a home. So so home starts will start to go down. Um, so sales of existing homes will start to go down. Um, because it's getting more expensive. But historically, if you were my age, you'd know that 5.23% was is awesome. <laughs> you know, I th think that's great. But when you currently have a mortgage in the twos, uh, like I have, then, you know, 5.23% sounds awful. Um, maybe even double from where you are. But, uh, but yeah, so so these are the, the measures I'm looking at. The other one that I, I didn't throw up here, but I'll mention is oil. Uh, it's been up 100 to $120 a barrel. Uh, this is something that is actually, uh, to me, is, is helping change the narrative also. We see things like uh, CPI. We see the weakening in the GDP. We see all the sentiment um, getting very uh, bearish uh, on, on people's part. And uh, so the mortgage rates, uh, or excuse me, the oil at $120 a barrel, I think as we start to see the demand destruction that goes along with some of these numbers that, um, you're, going to that you're going to start to see uh, energy uh, roll over also. And uh, uh, so some of the relief will come from the, the combination of these measures in the fact that I believe that the, I still believe that the 10-year um, treasury uh, will start to uh, go down. If, like I said, I, I told you what, what my thoughts were if it continues to go up. And, uh, you know, if oil doesn't roll over, then, it, you know, inflation will have uh, really won the battle and my complete investing strategy will change at that point. Um, Things that I am looking at and just kind of my commentary section. Um, again, I am, uh, I believe we're in a recession. Uh, I am playing straddle so that if my uh, bullish portion plays out or if the uh, bearish portion plays out, I, I win either way. Um, but I don't win if things stay where they are, and I don't think things are going to, are going to stay neutral. It's just craziness, as you can tell from the last uh, couple of days of trading. Uh, back spreads, if I if I g give me uh, kind of a directional, but at a, a lesser premium, uh, as far as the options that are being played, uh, other things that I'm playing as inflation hedges are uh, precious metals and. Uh, uh, I'll talk about that probably in a separate episode at, at some juncture. Um, I, th I think I need an episode also on CPI. CPI is uh, uh, important. I'd like to go through some of those numbers that are in there and talk about some of the things that I mentioned about, you know, how they changed the number over the years and why and, and, and uh, some of those things. So anyway, that's, that's it for this week. Um, I wish I had better news <laughs> as of this Friday afternoon, but, you know, things go up and things go down. And right now we're in a kind of a down cycle. Uh, I anticipate bounce back next week. Um, but, you know, maybe we have a couple more days of down, um, you know, before things start to, to, to recover or if we're going to get this bounce, um, this kind of uh, mega bear rally uh, that, that I still think uh, is going to happen before things completely collapse. Um, but I have an eye, you know, I've got one foot on land and one foot in the boat. So I'm kind of playing it both ways at the moment uh, in case I'm wrong about the melt up. So that's it for this week. Um, and remember, there's always a better way. <laughs>